Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Stag Night. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a young blonde woman running through an empty subway station at night. Her dress is all torn up and there is blood on her. She tries to find an exit, but all the doors have been locked and she is hobbling on one leg. Howls and shrieks can be heard behind her. She desperately climbs an escalator, hoping to get away from the unseen men chasing her. But the escalator suddenly reverses and goes down instead of up. With her bad leg, she just can't go up anymore, and the escalator takes her back to the previous floor. Someone drags her down, and her cries echo through the subway tunnel. After a few seconds, she is swallowed by the darkness, and there is nothing left but two bloody handprints on the escalator glass. It is 3.29 a.m., and Mike's wild stag night is in full swing in a seedy New York nightclub. He steps away for a moment to call his fiancée and check in on her. He also tells her that his rambunctious brother, Tom, attended the stag night too. The fiancée never liked Tom, and she expresses her disapproval to Mike. However, Mike assures her that Tom will behave. Moments later, their call is abruptly interrupted, when Tom is forcibly thrown out of the club by the bouncers. Mike tries to defuse the situation, although Tom fights back. With him are Carl and Joe, two of Mike's friends who also organized the stag night. Joe is more mild-mannered than the two friends, and he suggests just calling it a night. But Carl refuses to let the night end without a proper wild celebration. So he convinces the group to go to this bar on the other side of the city, where they can drink until morning. They rush to get inside the subway station before it closes. They jump the turnstiles and enter the nearly empty train. Inside the car are two strippers they recognize from the bar. The first one is a wild blonde who proceeds to flirt with Carl. The other is a quiet brunette reading a book. Tom tries to flirt with her as well, but she rebuffs his advances. While the two are talking to the girls, Mike gives Joe the wedding ring for safekeeping. Since Joe is the most level-headed of his friends, he trusts Joe more than his she brother. Suddenly, Burnett gets pissed with Tom and pushes him off. Tom retaliates, and she douses him with pepper spray, possibly the anti-hormone spray. Chaos ensues inside the train car, just as the vehicle idles a stop. Burnett forces the doors to open, so they can get away from the pepper spray scent, and they all file out of the train. The driver doesn't see them, and assumes that there are no passengers anymore. So he closes the doors, and the train leaves the station. This leaves the whole group stranded at a random empty station in the middle of the night. All the exits are sealed off, and they discover that the particular station they're in hasn't been used in decades. There's no signal in their phones either. Tom blames Brunette for overreacting and causing everybody to be stranded. To calm things down, Mike suggests that he walk along the tracks until he reaches the next working station and get someone to help them. Joe offers to come with him, but Tom says that a train could come and run him over. However, they don't really have many options, so most of the group opts to walk as Mike suggested. But Carl announces that he'll be staying behind with Blonde. Brunette is concerned since they barely know Carl, but Blonde assures her that she wants to stay with him. The rest of the group start walking on the tracks. Brunette and Tom continue their bickering. He insults her for being a stripper, and she nearly clobbers him again. Brunette and Blonde are both stripping to pay their way through college, and this is why Brunette's rejection of Tom really rankles him. He thinks that a stripper like Brunette has no right to be picky when it comes to men. Of course, Brunette is indignant about his discrimination against her. So she retorts and asks him what he does for a living. Tom has been the problematic brother all his life, and it's no surprise that his devil-may-care attitude towards life has resulted in him losing job after job. Something clatters in the distance, followed by a shriek. The group gets bothered by this, so they walk a little faster. Brunette also explains the meaning of stag night. In ancient times, grooms would have to survive a night in the forest and hunt a stag before being able to marry the woman they love. Back in the station, Carl and Blonde start their exercise. They don't notice that someone is watching and approaching them. A kid dressed in ragged clothes comes up to the pair and steals her wallet. Carl chases him to the restroom, where the kid squeezes into a tiny opening to escape. He manages to grab the kid, but he bites Carl's hand. Carl returns to the platform and freaks out about getting diseases from the person who bit him. Meanwhile, the others reach the next station, and they see three homeless people rummaging for supplies. A policeman comes and stops them, but the homeless people suddenly pull out knives and stab him. The group are all frozen in horror at the violence they are witnessing. They are still standing on the tracks, so the homeless people can't see them in the darkness. But Tom hits a soda can with his foot and alerts the homeless people to their presence. One of them shines a flashlight and sees them on the tracks. The group runs as fast as they can away from the station, and the homeless people chase them. The three hunters get to the station and slice Carl with their blades. Blonde tries to run, but is eventually slain by them too. 
Meanwhile, the rest of the group stops when they notice that the hunters are no longer following them. Brunette argues that they should go back for Blonde and Carl, but the men say that there's no way they're going back in that direction. Right then, Mike hears a television from the other side of the tunnel. He finds a secret entrance, and the group steps inside. It's cramped and dark in the secret tunnel, and they only have a lighter and a cell phone screen to light their way. However, the way becomes brighter, and they arrive at a den where several dogs are chained. It's a wide space with tires littered throughout and a dumpster fire roaring. There's a small enclosed room tucked in the side where the television is. They peek at the window and see a woman with short hair with her back turned to them. Mike goes inside the room first and asks the woman for help, but she turns out to be just a mannequin in a waiting dress. They inspect the rest of the room, and Joe opens the door to a very dirty restroom with a pungent smell. Brunette uncovers a cloth hanging on the wall, and it reveals a collection of weapons. They quickly realize that the den belongs to the hunters they encountered earlier. At that same moment, one of the hunters arrives at the den. The dogs are barking loudly, and he gets suspicious. He goes inside the room, and Mike and the others hide under the floorboards, while Brunette hides in the restroom. The hunter is about to open the restroom door. But the rest of his companions arrive at the den with Blondes and Carl's bodies. He goes back outside, and the remaining four friends pop out of their hiding places to watch through the window. The hunter holds Carl upright, and his eyes flutter open. For a moment, he confusedly stares at his friends before the hunter decapitates him with his blade. Blood spurts out, and Mike turns away from the brutality of his friend's death. Next, they hack away at Blondes' body and feed parts to their chained dogs. The kid from earlier sneaks up on Brunette and gets her in a chokehold. Mike leaps to her rescue and blocks the door to the room with heavy furniture. They manage to get away in the nick of time, but one of the dogs bites Joe's arm. The four of them run to a labyrinthine hallway, with the hunters close behind. They reach an exit that leads directly to the train tracks, but a train is passing by at that very moment, blocking their way out. They scream as loud as they can, trying to get the attention of the passengers inside the train, but no one notices them. The hunters are closing in on them fast. Luckily, Mike finds his service door to the side, and they get inside just in time before the hunters reach them. The group continues to go deeper into the tunnels to get as much distance between them and the hunters. Along the way, Joe bandages his injured arm as best he could, and he comments that if Tom hadn't ruined things like he usually does, they wouldn't be in the station. They reach another exit that leads back to the tracks, and Tom goes in first. Suddenly, a messy man jumps out with his white hair and attacks Tom. They get into a scuffle. But it turns out he isn't one of the hunters, just a homeless man scavenging for trash. They ask him to point the way out, but the messy man just laughs maniacally and says that there is no way out. The kid appears and begins banging at the tire tracks with a bottle, and the homeless man joins in as well. Obviously, this is a signal to the hunters that announces their location. The hunters quickly arrive at their location, and Mike's group tries to run away. Joe decides to be a hero and stays behind, leading the hunters in a different direction. Mike screams for Joe to return, but his friend just tells him to call his wife and kids. Joe used to be a college athlete, just like Mike, so he has the skills and experience to outrun the hunters, but they're bigger and know the tunnels, and Joe is injured as well. He puts up a good fight and even manages to dodge one of the hunters, but he eventually twists his leg and falls down right underneath the sewer grate. Above him, people are walking all over the street, unaware of the horror happening below. Water from the street trickles down through the grate and drops on his hands. The hunter's dog catches up to him and mauls him, tearing open his neck. In a last-ditch effort, he touches the live train track with his wet hands and causes it to spark. Seeing the wedding ring that Mike asked Joe to keep safe, the hunter steals it. Meanwhile, the three remaining survivors continue running. But to their disappointment, they realize that they're right back at the abandoned platform where they started. The gates are still locked, and the group is quickly losing hope. They then hear the sound of the hunters approaching. Mike and Brunette fall through a hole in the platform, and Tom ducks to the restroom to hide. They stay quiet, so they wouldn't be heard by the hunters. However, large cockroaches crawl all over Brunette, and she can't contain her disgust, but her noises catch the attention of the hunters. To give them time to escape, the shitty Tom makes a selfless move for once and begins making noise, so the hunters would chase him instead. However, he is trapped in the bathroom stall, and the hunters try to force their way in. Brunette and Mike end up at a tunnel under the tracks. Mike hides and catches the following hunter in surprise. However, due to the hunter's large size, Mike is overpowered, and the hunter almost kills him. Brunette helps him by snatching the hunter's blade and distracting him. Mike manages to hoist the hunter's head upward, just in time for him to get decapitated by the switching train tracks. Tom grabs the ceramic toilet cover and takes on the two hunters in the restroom. He gets a few blows in, but is eventually forced against a wall. 
The hunter plunges his blade into Tom's stomach, and for a few seconds, he actually stops the blade from going in. But the hunter just presses harder, and the blade skewers Tom's body. Ronette and Mike wander the tunnels, and come across a homeless settlement right inside one of the tunnels. They try to ask the homeless people for help, and one man offers to lead them out. But this is all just pretend. The homeless people never want the police to know that they are there, so they knock Mike out and call the hunters. Ronette loses consciousness too. She wakes up, only to find herself tied to the chair inside the hunter's den. Her hair has been cut short, and she is wearing the dress that the mannequin was wearing earlier. The hair in the dress resemble the haircut and dress of the woman, who is shown running through the tunnels at the beginning of the film, implying that they do this to the female victims they catch. Mike wakes up, and discovers that he is tied upside down to the ceiling. He hears Brunette's screams, and frantically frees himself from his bindings. He fights the two hunters, and she helps him by knocking one of them in the head. The other one has a long metal spear that he tries to hit Mike with. But the blade punctures through the wall of the room, and into Brunette instead. Enraged, Mike punches the hunter. He slams Mike to the wall, and is about to stab him with a knife. But Mike stops the blade with sheer strength. He looks down, and sees that the hunter is wearing his wedding ring. He then gets a burst of strength when he thinks of his fiancée, and how he has to live through this disaster and return to her. At last, Mike overpowers the hunter, ending his hunting life instead. Mike rushes to Brunette's side, but it's clear that she is not going to make it, due to the severity of her wound. Mike cradles her dying body, and comforts her as she takes her last breath. He tells her about his fiancée, and she remarks that she is lucky that he chose her. Back in the hunter's den, the kid discovers the dead bodies of the hunters. He picks up the fallen spear, with an angry look on his face. After Brunette dies, Mike makes his way to the subway entrance, just as it's opening. He sits on the steps, and dials his fiancée. She immediately senses that something is wrong, so she comforts him, and tells him that everything will be okay. Mike walks to the subway entrance, and sees the sun shining brightly outside. Just as when he starts believing that he is safe, he turns around. The movie ends with the kid running up to him with the spear in his hand. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.